What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to run through my top seven most underrated corals. Now, if it's your first time at the channel, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Some of the corals on this list are not gonna be as hard to keep as you think, and some might even be the first stony coral you should keep. So with that said, Let's get to the list. First up is Seriatopora caliendrum. When people talk about beginner SPS corals, they usually mention Seriatopora hystrix and Seriatopora guttatus. And while those are easy to care for, their thin branches grow in a non-uniform pattern that isn't particularly pleasing to the eye. Caliendrum is just as easy to keep, it's a much brighter green than guttatus, it glows better under blue lights, and it develops into a lovely symmetrical pattern. It's also one of the few beginner SPS corals that doesn't look out of place surrounded by Acropora and it's a fast grower, which means it's usually cheap to buy and will fill out in no time. Number six on my list of underrated corals is an LPS coral called Leptostraea, and I'm gonna focus in particular on the gorgeous John Deere Leptostraea. Apart from its coloring, the real bonus of this is that it doesn't have long stinger tentacles like some LPS. And unlike most encrusting corals, this has a really fluffy looking texture, which gives it a unique look. I love encrusting corals because you can put them on cool shaped structures to create a really interesting look. My Mexican turbo snail died recently, but I'm putting his shell to work with a plan that I'll end up with what should look like a Leptostraea temple. And for the next entry, I'm going to cheat by including a clam, which isn't a coral at all. Clams are absolutely beautiful animals though, and aren't all as difficult to keep as you might think. With Dorata clams in particular, you don't need to be a reefing genius to keep them, as they don't require such strong light. They do grow big and over a long enough period they'll outgrow most tanks but we're talking years before they get to that stage and most local fish shops will pay good money if you want to rehome a massive clam anyway. One thing to keep in mind is that fish like the cleaner ass, angelfish and butterfly fish will peck at clams so you'll need to decide what you like most. Number four on my list of underrated corals is the Leptoceris. There are different color varieties, but the stunning Jack O' Lantern is the pick for me. It's bright orange, which is rare among corals and has stunning yellow flecks to boot. They're another commonly available LPS coral and will form an encrusting pattern without sending out long stinger tentacles. They're not especially difficult to keep and being an orange coral, they look fantastic next to anything blue. So they'd make a great neighbor for that clam you've just started thinking about. First on the podium then is another relatively easy to keep SPS coral, the Samacora, which unlike a drunk man outside a kebab house, has a silent P. This encrusting coral comes in various gorgeous colors and the watermelon Samacora comes in that super rare orange color we saw on our friend the Jack-O-Lantern. Only this time it has a green skirt with a fluffy look like the Leptostraea. You can get plain green versions, but green corals are 10 a penny, so the watermelon Samacora has that edge over some of the more common easy-ish SPS corals. And number two on my list of underrated corals are Cyphastria. Now, although Cyphastria sounds like an STD, the really great thing about these is that they come in endless color combinations. They usually have a base that's one color with short polyps in a contrasting color. Common types include the Meteor Shower, Jingle Bells, and Bizarro. And with so many different varieties, you can pick and choose something to suit your taste. It would also look great if you put a few of these next to each other and let them grow out into a little Cyphastria garden. They're really hardy, so we'll be forgiving of imperfect water conditions, and they're generally a quick grower, so it won't be long before you see them at their very best. And the most underrated coral in the hobby are fancy Montiporas. I'm not talking about the standard red and green Monty Digi and Monty Cap, I'm talking about the stunning special varieties like Rainbow Phoenix and Gold Rush Montes. Aquapora are often seen as the pinnacle of the hobby, and quite rightly so, but I've often thought life would be that little bit easier if you kept hardy high-end Montiporas instead. The colours will blow your mind and you can get encrusting, branching or plating varieties. There are loads of multicolored Montes and they are of course among the easiest to keep SPS corals. They usually don't require particularly high light and because they grow fairly quickly, you'll be able to make your money back by fragging them, which makes the higher priced varieties a little more attainable. Of the more common varieties, my favorite is the Monte Undata. They have beautiful white polyps on a teal green base and form an awesome curling growth pattern. And of the more high-end stuff, I like the Montipora Powellinensis corals. That's where you see the likes of Rainbow Phoenix, Beach Bum and so on. They have a gorgeous braille-like texture and the colors are like nothing else in the hobby. For me, fancy Montes are the coral equivalent of Blennies. You just shouldn't be allowed to keep a marine tank without them. So they are my top seven most underrated corals, but I'd love to hear from you. So let me know what yours are in the comment section below. And as ever, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until next time, Happy reefing.